So where we left off is we talked about Jefferson being the president and James, or, uh, James Madison is going to take over. Uh, today is going to be kind of a quick review of exactly all these actions that will lead us into America's first declared uh, war, which is the War of 1812. And it starts, um, you really have to rewind all the way back to when America was a colony in the French and Indian War. So remember, the French and Indian War started because of France and England and the colonists of both areas having conflict out in that Ohio Valley region over the Ohio River, over all the Great Lakes and all of that. And then understand the context from world history in a sense that basically, guys, the entire 1700s and the early 1800s, France and England are at war with each other, right? They don't like each other at all. And we kind of get caught in the middle of their crap storm. Okay, so we have to be able to assess commercial, what economics and diplomatic relationships with Britain and France with us and what's going on with them and each other. And because we refuse to pick a side of one or the other, we end up pissing both of them off. And it's going to lead us to these 10 this basically 20 or 30 years after the American Revolution of conflict with both of them. And ultimately, Britain pushes our button enough to where we're willing to fight them in another war, what is called the War of 1812. So the review of how we got there, basically, guys, the, the France declares war in the Napoleonic Wars, Napoleon, okay, on all of Europe, Britain, the Netherlands, Portugal, and Spain. And at that point, George Washington proclaimed that in foreign affairs, we would be neutral. Y'all remember all that. Okay, don't get intertwined in foreign affairs. It's in our best interest economically to basically stay out of touch with all of them. We do have a brief embargo, but really Washington wants to stay neutral. And then Adams is going to try to stay neutral as well. Okay. The problem with this is over the course of the next 10 years or so that Britain and France for that matter, but Britain primarily is mad that we don't take their side when they're fighting Napoleon. Everybody with me? And they start doing what we call impressment. So essentially they start taking and kidnapping American soldiers. Everybody got me and American merchants and forcing them to fight in the British Navy. Now, would that ever happen to America now without us declaring war on them? No. But we didn't have a very powerful army. We didn't have a very powerful Navy at that point. We don't have a Navy at that point. But anyway, they're kind of needling us. And you know what a bully's going to keep doing if you don't do anything about it? They're going to keep needling you. Also, in the years after the American Revolution, Britain had said that they would remove all of their people from our land and our territory. Well, they kept people out in that Ohio Valley. They kept forts. They kept all this stuff. So they're like, we know you won, but we're just going to keep our people over here unwelcome. Everybody with me? So needless to say, Britain did not respect us as a country. They're stealing our they're stealing our people. They're not abiding by all these treaties that have gone on, but we don't have the power to negotiate with them. And they pretty much know that we're not going to fight a war again, that we're not ready for. We still haven't recovered economically at this point from the American revolution. That remember how much problems we had with the articles of confederation and now the constitution and so on. And so on. we're just trying to keep our footing. That's why this unit is called growing pains. We're not a grown up yet in the sense that Britain, France are world powers. They don't really recognize us as an independent nation or we are, but you're just little old America kind of stay in your lane, bro. Everybody with me on that. So that's going on. Washington wants us to remain neutral. Uh, France is mad that we're, we're still trading with Britain. Britain's mad that we're still trading with France while France, while they're fighting with each other to complicate matters. Britain doesn't like us because France fought with us in the American Revolution. All right. 
Then you had the whole fiasco that was the John Adams presidency. I shouldn't have to remind you guys of the XYZ affair where France is going through revolution. Jefferson wants Adams to kind of take their side. We send diplomats over to deal with Charles Talleyrand and they basically humiliate our diplomats like, eh, little old America, it's nice of you to come delegate. You'll pay us $12 million or we won't really mess with you either. Y'all remember the XYZ affair? Then you had the whole deal with the Alien and Sedition Acts, the Alien and Sedition Acts being uh, we basically said if you speak out against the Federalist Party, a lot of these guys were French or French immigrants, uh, we're going to throw you in jail. Everybody with me? So France is pissed off at us at the way we're treating their people and the fact that they won't help them with their own revolution at that time period. So we're going to still remain neutral. Then all of this nonsense happens with Thomas Jefferson, where we get more impressment. And Jefferson was always seen as pro-French. Remember, he was the French ambassador to the for the U.S. Uh, during his time as during the American Revolution, and then was considered pro-French. Well, so the British already hate Jefferson. They've hated him for 20 years at this point. Everybody with me? And then during after the Louisiana Purchase and all that, Jefferson's tenure as president goes way downhill when he enforces the Embargo Act in 1807 which basically he halted trade. The Embargo Act halted trade, stopped trade into and out of American ports. What Jefferson thought the Embargo Act would do is that it would hurt the British economy. It would hurt the French economy. What it did was very little to them and a lot of bad to us. And America goes into recession as a result of it. Okay, so the Embargo Act is terrible. Jefferson tries all of these peaceful measures to improve it, but by the time he leaves office and his Secretary of State, James Madison, wins the presidency, we've pretty much gotten to a point where we have to stand up to the bully. Okay, and that's what happens in the War of 1812. Now, before I go over this bullet point list, I want you guys to look at this territory, this map over here. Well, this blue after Jefferson's presidency, thanks to the Louisiana Purchase and winning the American Revolution, this blue all belongs to the United States of America. But where my mouse is up here, you guys should be able to see it on your screen. Like this area right here in, in what we call the Ohio Valley, the British never really left there. Okay, and then up here in the green, Britain's still on. Okay, so Britain we're going to have friction with them regardless because they're still on our continent. And at this point, a lot of Canada is still British controlled. Okay. Well, couple that with this idea after the Louisiana purchase that the United States gets this idea that we, we believe in manifest destiny, that all of this from the Atlantic ocean to the Pacific ocean should be ours. Well, Spain sits in our way of that in what is now Texas, California, all of that was Spain. Britain sits in our way in what is now Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. You guys get the drift. So eventually, guys, when the little brother, let's say I want the whole floor in my house, but the little brother has a room. If I eventually want the, the whole upper floor of my house, I got to kick the little brother downstairs. The problem is the little brother is a lot bigger than me, even though he's technically my little brother. Or in this case is if I'm the little brother, I got to get the big brother downstairs. We ain't got the we ain't got the actual birth to fight the big brother now. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Then I want you guys, so we decide that we want to gain the entire what is now the United States through this manifest destiny. And Madison decides that the bully has bullied us long enough. And you guys, if you know anything about a bully, what do you eventually have to do to the bully? You gotta punch him in the face, right? Well, that's exactly what Henry Clay and John C. Calhoun say. Now, those two names, guys, over the course of the next 50 years that you'll study in history up until the Civil War are probably the two most important Americans and probably Frederick Douglass uh, that we'll study that didn't become the president of the United States. Y'all got me? So Henry Clay and John C. Calhoun are big players in Congress. They're big players in the United States Senate. Uh, Calhoun will eventually become the Vice President of the United States. 
uh, Clay becomes known as the great compromiser. But this is where both of these guys burst themselves onto the American scene, and they lead a congressional committee, basically, or a co congressional leadership, and they begin calling themselves the Warhawks. Basically, the Warhawks want war with Britain. Everybody with me? Now, they'll be important for various other reasons over the course of the next couple of units. But Henry Clay and John C. Calhoun know who those guys are. And they get Congress and Madison to declare war. The War of 1812, guys, begins in 1812. Everybody got me? And it was fought over, basically, everybody says, why was the War of 1812 fought? Well, it was fought over this territory or this friction. It was basically fought because Britain had pissed us off for the last 30 years and finally we just had enough of it everybody with me now two things that i really need you to know about the war of 1812 the treaty of ghent ended it we did not win the war of 1812 it was essentially a stalemate everybody with me it was essentially a stalemate um the problem is, and it's hard for all of us to understand, because if a war ends, even in my lifetime, I knew it by the end of the day with the local news. You guys know it on Twitter, any type of news. Well, the Treaty of Ghent happened. The war had happened. Well, a week or so later, the Battle of New Orleans is fought. And while it all, why it always seems like America won the War of 1812 is because the Battle of New Orleans took place after it was actually over, and it was a huge American win. And really, the first American war hero since George Washington takes root, and it's a guy named Andrew Jackson. He, General Andrew Jackson, he leads American troops to a major victory at New Orleans, okay? And eventually, he's going to use his war heroism to become the seventh president of the United States. So the Battle of New Orleans is the most famous battle of the War of 1812. Who won? Nobody won. Basically, everything, the consequences were that U.S. and Great Britain agreed to return land boundaries to where they were before. So basically, a bunch of killing over nothing. But by standing up to the bully, America gained respect from France, Britain, and the rest of Europe. And we just remember, guys, 1783, we beat the British in the American Revolution. Pardon me. We beat Britain... Um, in the American Revolution, then we fought them to a standstill in the War of 1812. So we get respect, which is ultimately what we had to get. Uh, we finally hit the bully in the face. And our nationalism, as a result, there became an increased pride in being American, uh, that we could fight anybody on the block. We were now, uh, as a result, go to that last bullet point. We had always relied on European countries, Britain and France, to provide us finished products. If you guys remember from world history, the Industrial Revolution had taken place in Europe in the late 1700s. Well, that made its way over to America. So not only did we have wheat, tobacco, cotton, whatever, now we started learning how to develop our own clothes, to develop our own weaponry, machinery, whatever. So we became increasingly independent, not only from a government standpoint, but from a creation of our own resource standpoint. Okay, so we became more financially independent without having to rely on Britain as a result of the War of 1812. And it's going to create this era of good feelings that we talk about. And what the era of good feelings was, was nationalistic pride. And really, we only had one govern one party lead. The Federalist Party is dead after Adams did the Alien and Sedition Acts, when Jefferson wins, Madison wins, and then James Monroe wins, the Democratic Republicans are gonna control the presidency uh, for basically 20 years. Everybody with me? 24 years from 1800 to 1824. Kind of my last slide, just some quick things that, you know, fun facts. The national anthem, people think it was written as a result of the American Revolutionary War. It was actually written as a guy named Francis Scott Key sat on a boat or a boat and he saw Fort McHenry being bombed uh, in Baltimore. Uh, the, the bombs bursting in, in air, the rocket's red glare, the Star Spangled Banner was written as a poem during the War of 1812. 
Also, the White House was burned down during the War of 1812. The White House that stands today is not the original White House. First Lady Dolly Madison, James Madison's wife, famously went back into the flames um, as it was burning down and got some key pictures and artifacts out of there to preserve them and save them. Uh, we basically had to rebuild the city of Washington, D.C. I told you guys about Andrew Jackson becoming a war hero as a war as a result of the War of 1812, he will become the seventh president of the United States. The ninth president of the United States is a guy named William Henry Harrison, who famously uh, fought at the Battle of Tippecanoe, uh, which is up here in Indiana. And remember, a lot of this had fought. The French and Indian War in the 1750s and 60s was fought as a result of this area and all of the conflict that happened as a result of both uh, England and France wanting control of that area of, the, of what is now the United States. Britain never left that area even after we beat them and, our, and won that area in the American Revolution. So we're settling all of this, these scores and eventually after the War of 1812, uh, Britain will leave that area. So the War of 1812, guys, what is the ultimate result? Respect nat national pride. That's why it's important. Now, I'm going to show this crash course video of John Green, and I'm going to show it through the screen, so make sure you pay attention. Let me stop. 